Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery and visit me on the web CaltonCutlery.com. So today we are going to do a straight razor video. It's been a while since I did a razor video, um, but uh, what's today? Thursday? I think Sunday was Father's Day, right? And my boy got me a vintage straight razor from one of the flea markets here in town. And so it is I mean fresh out of the the plastic baggie from the flea market so we are going to go ahead and take this razor and uh, talk about it a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and hone it up and if we got some time go ahead and shave with it all right so well first of all you know thanks to my boy my boy vance you know for the for the straight razor um you know it's it's kind of amazing that he's 17 already, you know, driving, you know, getting ready to, um, you know, to, to take on life and, and see where it goes. So it's been very cool to watch him, you know, from birth all the way to, to, to now. Anyway, so, um, and he and I both shave with straight razors. Uh, I think the one that he likes the most is the one that I made him out of uh, W1 and box elder burl um i think that's the one that he likes the most or at least that's what he tells me he likes the most so anyway so this one right here uh it's a pretty cool razor i mean it's a um uh, what was it the it says the palmer uh chicago and number 21 so i did look that up on <clears throat> on the the internet right quick and apparently the palmer is some um, really fancy hotel somewhere um, probably something that I would never stay in but apparently I guess the consensus on these razors was that um, the Palmer had these made by somebody else and they just put their name on it and either used it in their barbershop or uh, you know sold them in the gift shop or something or other but anyway it's not in bad shape it looks like it's been rescaled um, you know, these look like, uh, I mean, see the wedge doesn't, uh, uh, it kind of slops around in there. I'll probably put put a piece of super, or drop a super glue in there. So <clears throat> the scales look like they're aftermarket. The blade itself, um, I like it. It's, uh, what, about a 5 8 or so. Um, I would call that like a half hollow. Um, it, you know, I mean, it's, you know. I mean, 5 8 is kind of a tough one to really get, you know, deep hollows in and still have enough. I mean, you got to use really, really small wheels to grind those. It does have some jimping underneath here. Um, it does have some home wear, so it has been used. And it does have some rust along the edge. And the edge itself doesn't seem to be in bad shape. Um, I think I tested it, and it would... Yeah, it'll take some hairs, but I sure wouldn't call it, uh, you know, ready to shave my face with. So we're going to fix that. So first of all, let's get the whole, you know, the whole razor, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You know, the whole, like, fanciness, you know, out of the way, okay? Yes, this is an old razor. I kind of doubt it's a hundred year old razor. Um, it does have spine wear on it. And so, and we're going to put more spine wear on it, you know, as we use it. Um, I'm not going to tape this one up. Um, you know, I mean, it's a special razor to me because my boy get, uh, gave it to me. But, you know, this is a daily shaver. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so we're not going to mess around with doing, you know, rolling X strokes or this kind of fancy strokes or stand on our head and do, you know, a heel to toe stroke or, you know, any of that kind of nonsense. OK, we're going to hone the thing up. We're going to shave with it and then I'm going to shave with it, you know, I don't know, once a week, once every other week, whenever I feel like it. OK, it's a razor. That's what we're going to use it for. OK, <clears throat> so along with the not getting all fancy with the different types of strokes and you know all that kind of stuff um we're going to use one combination stone today and my strop and that's it because honestly i mean i really like straight razors and everything um you know and i i do have a whole bunch of uh honing stones you know i'm i haven't really counted but i guess there's at least a couple of dozen of them out there in the shop 
Um, you know, and that's cool and all, um, but honestly, when it comes down to it, you know, I just want to shave with the thing, right? You know, so I want the simplest honing method and the simplest maintenance method that I can get that'll give me good shaves. Um, I don't shave every day. Uh, you know, I mean, honestly, I'm a knife maker. I mean, you know, when was the last time you went to a knife maker's office and, you know, really gave a, you know, cared if, if he'd shave that morning or not, right? So, you know, I usually shave, uh, you know, twice a week, maybe something like that. Usually when it gets to the point where it's all itchy. And honestly, that's where I really love the straight razors is because the straight razors do not care if you shaved yesterday or if you shaved, you know, six months ago. Um, you know, the, the hair doesn't clog up like little guides or anything like a disposable razor. It just cuts the stuff off your face and away you go. All right. So what we're going to do today, now this is a new camera setup. So, um, so let's hope that it, it works right. So remember, I haven't gotten the new, um, uh, I mean, I've got the bathroom roughed in in the shop, but I haven't uh, uh, run water or sewer out there yet, so I don't have a sink. I've got a, you know, a five-gallon bucket on a stump that I fill with water and, you know, uh, swap it out every couple of days. You know, that's just kind of get to get the top layer of stuff off your hands before you come back into the house. So we've got this whole new setup here. This is basic. I mean, it's a, just a two by four with uh, the ends notched out. Okay, and it and it fits nice and snug across the sink. All right, um, I'll probably shoot another video on that pretty soon. This right here, what we have is a King 1000 6000 grit combination stone. Okay, it's the older version, not the uh, the newer version for harder steels. Uh, I can't remember the number designations on those. And this, I mean, it's a nothing special. I think I gave $27 for this stone on Amazon, brand new. Okay. And I've been using this for, uh, I've actually been testing out some edges, some 6,000 grit edges in daily use. Um, and so this stone has been sharpening my pocket knife, my kitchen knives, my belt knife. I mean, everything, right? So <clears throat> the only thing we're going to do special to it um, to get it ready for honing a straight razor is we are going to lap it. Okay because you can see on the 6,000 grit side that all that black, well, that's steel and, you know, nastiness from the last couple of pocket knives I sharpened on it. And we don't really want that on uh, the stone for honing a straight razor because honing a straight razor, we do want to take it to a little bit higher level of sharpness slash polishedness, you know, just so that it's comfortable to take hair off our face, right? So now what I normally use is this. This is a, a Smith's um, course, so it's a 325 interrupted surface, but it's the huge one. Um, it doesn't say what size it is, but it is massive, and apparently they don't make these anymore. So this is a worn out um, 2x6 DMT 325, so the course also. One of these days I'm gonna swing by um, Harbor Freight and pick up one of their uh, uh, their diamond stones and see if that'll work good for lapping things. So pretty much we just want to take the top layer of stone off and check that the stone is reasonably flat, okay? I mean, I guess we could get, uh, we could get a pencil out and do a grid on there. But I don't think we're gonna go that far. Okay, so on this side, it's kind of tough to tell because there's no like grid or anything, right? <clears throat> the 6K side, it's gonna be fairly easy. See, you've got all these marks and, and uh, chunks of steel embedded in the stone. Well, when all of those are gone, then we're gonna have to be relatively flat. Should've put more water in the sink. Okay, see there? See, we've got most of it, but not all of it. These interrupted stones work pretty good for this because, um, you know, the interruptedness uh, gives space for, for stone particles and trash to, to get into.
No, just a couple of more strokes, I think. There we go. Now, the last time that I chamfered these edges, I kind of went a little bit too far. So I'm not going to chamfer the edges for the next, I don't know, dozen or two dozen times that I flatten this, just to let them come, you know, come back down. All right, so we got our two by four. We got a piece of paper towel here. We're going to start with our 1,000 grit side. We got our razor. Um, like I said, uh, I can't really see any light reflecting off the edge, but I can feel the rust. Um, not so much back here, but the forward half, there is quite a bit of rust on there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kill the edge. Just by cutting into the end of the stone. Okay, I still can't see any light reflecting really, but I can tell there's no edge there anymore. Alright, and it won't scrape hair or anything. Alright, so um, you lay the razor flat on the stone. Okay, now the difference between straight razors and knives, so a knife. you would lay the blade flat on the stone okay, and then raise it up just till the spine clears the stone and then sharpen it at that angle. You free, you know, you're, you maintain the angle you know, by hand, right? With a straight razor, the angle is built in. Okay, so you just rest the spine on the stone at the same time that the edge is contacting the stone and that's what sets your angle. Okay, now one thing if you're a newbie or a new person at honing a straight razor, go ahead and get yourself some 3M electrical tape or whatever kind of electrical tape that you have handy. Scotch tape also works pretty good. And tape that spine up, okay? Um, <clears throat> it looks something like this. You take a piece of tape. Ah, I grabbed it with the wrong hand. There is a skill and an art form into applying tape to razors. And you put the tape onto the spine and then you fold it over. Okay, and what that does is that um, it'll wear the spine out or it'll wear the tape out before the stone starts contacting the spine. Okay, so I guess we can do that a little bit here. I mean the whole tape versus no tape thing, you know, I don't think it really matters. I mean, it does uh, uh, prevent some home wear, especially when you're learning. Um, I find, you know, having multiple razors that, you know, tape versus no tape, I forget which one I honed with tape and which one I honed without tape. And so, honestly, any more, like if, if I'm setting up a new, you know, like a taking a razor like this and if it's got a whole bunch of uh, nicks and stuff that need repaired I'll use tape just to kind of make it to where I can be a little bit sloppier you know in my uh, roughing in work and then take the tape off and then you know hone it up without it alright but the thing is is that you might lay it flat okay but you do want to put a little bit of sideways torque on it okay so put a little bit of torque on Put a little bit of torque on the inside of the tang there so that the edge gets more pressure than the spine does even though the spine is still contacting the stone okay um, <clears throat> that'll help you out quite a bit so pretty much what we're going to do here now i am putting torque on and i am placing my fingertips on the edge side of the razor okay i'm not really pressing down i'm just placing them there it's one of those things that just by thinking you're putting a little bit of weight on there is enough that I mean that's enough weight okay so we're gonna hone on this side for a little bit okay now I can already see with the naked eye that we've cleaned up an awful lot of that rust 
but there are still little bits of rust right at the edge. We're not all the way down to the edge yet. But we want to kind of keep it even, so we're going to go on the other side. Now the amount of force that you use <coughs> in honing straight razors, um, it is a little bit less than what you would use on, say, a pocket knife, right? Now that right there, I felt some grittiness, and what that was was that this tape was starting to break down. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. So I, I, I mean, honing a straight razor does require less pressure than honing, say, a pocket knife, but it's it's kind of Okay, if you're putting an awful lot of pressure on a, a knife when you're sharpening it, okay, well that means that you're either repairing a whole bunch of damage on a really coarse stone, okay, or you're overdoing it. And the funny thing is, is like you get on the internet and straight razor guys, I don't know, it's... There is more BS when it come out there when it comes to, to straight razor honing than there is with knives. And there's a whole bunch of BS when it comes with, you know, when it comes to knives. All right, so we're starting to pick up a burr on this side. It's very, very slight, okay? But we're not done. I still see pits um, and I can still feel rough spots up here on the toe. So we gotta keep going. Which is probably why I don't make a whole lot of straight razor videos is because, you know, I uh, post up a, you know, how to hone a straight razor, uh, you know, quick and simple, right? And then I get a whole bunch of comments, guys, saying, no, you know, you can't do that with a hundred-year-old razor and, um, you know, you did it wrong. Hey, let's face it, right? I mean, if you have a, a razor and it won't shave and then you spend a little bit of time on it and then it does shave... Doesn't that mean that you did it right? Okay, so we do have a nice burr going along the whole side up here, right? We still have a little bit of pitting up in here um, and a little bit of pitting on this side. So we'll switch sides and see if we can get rid of it up at the toe, move the burr to the other side and then uh, and then come back to that first side and see if we can clean it up there. The nice thing about using a burr for sharpening, whether it's a straight razor or it's a kitchen knife or a pocket knife or a chopper or a sword or anything like that, is that that burr tells you when you're done. Because it seems to me like the, the fellas that don't use the burr method, especially when honing razors, <clears throat> they spend way too much time talking about the bevel set, right? All the bevel set means is that both sides of the blade have been ground on an even plane until they match, okay? That's it. That's all the bevel set means. Well, if you use the burr base method, the burr tells you when it happens because <clears throat> to get the burr you have to you know bring both sides of the the steel to meet so a little bit of that steel comes over and that's all the burr is if you have a burr you have to uh, have a bevel set I mean there's there's no two ways around it okay a little bit more up there
Okay, I think we got it. I mean, we've had a burr for a little bit now, but I could see bits and pieces of, uh, uh, you know, rust and, and nastiness on there. So this side right here is done. Any more work that we do on this side is just going to be to match this side or to kind of even it out. I mean, like I said, this is going to be a user razor. And so, you know, really who cares if one side is a little bit off than the other side? I mean, it's still going to go through your whiskers just fine, right? Okay, so everything on here looks good except for this portion right here of the, the uh, tip on this side. So we'll kind of concentrate up there a little bit. We've got just a little bit more. Okay, we just have a hair left, but in the interest of keeping things a little bit even, we'll go ahead and we'll hone on this side just a little bit. Okay, now we'll come back to this side and I think we'll have it. Okay, so there is just a couple of little bitty, a little bitty goobers right there, okay? But, I don't, I, I mean, without, you know, grabbing magnification, I mean, <clears throat> I can see them on the side of the blade, but I can't see them on, you know, looking down on the edge of the blade, okay? Which, honestly, you'd be like a superhuman, you know, I mean, if you could actually see that, okay? So what we're going to do is, instead of wearing the whole blade away, trying to get that particular portion just perfect, we're going to go ahead and clean up, you know, on our 1,000 grit stone, all right? Then we're going to switch to our 6,000 grit stone, and we're going to go ahead and strop it up and shave with it. Okay, so now we're going to do what I call stone stropping, okay? I think pretty much everybody that does stone strop calls it stone stropping, or uh, they might call it trailing edge uh, strokes for those guys that like to name their strokes, you know, so like this right here is, you know, a bob stroke and uh, this right here is a fill stroke, you know, all you're doing is rubbing the, the chunk of steel on a rock to make it sharp, right? Okay, but the tr uh, stone stropping, if you think of the surface of the stone as, say, a beach, right okay so a beach is mostly sand right okay but in that sand you're gonna have different grades of sand okay so you're gonna have uh, if you blow them up under magnification you're gonna see big rocks you're gonna see little rocks okay because sand is just broken down rock right well the same thing with the stone <clears throat> now they call it a thousand grit stone so the majority of those are a thousand grit okay but still they're still little stones, all right? So if you cut into the edge like this, like that, okay? Any of those stones that come loose, plus any of the steel particles that you've shaved off, you know, while you were shaping and everything, you're pushing your edge into all that, okay? 
if you pull it back over it, then as it rides over that, you know, you're not impacting your edge. It's, you know, trailing, all right? So it's a good way to max out your stone. just going to do this until uh, until you really can't feel much of a burr anymore. The burr is still going to be there, but it'll just be lined up, right? And we'll deal with it um, after the 6K side uh, doing a palm strop. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. Now at this point, it should take hair fairly easy. And it will across the entire length of the, the blade. All right, so now we go to our 6K side, right? And we cleaned it off with the, the, the diamond stone. So now we're gonna do straight up stone stropping the whole time, okay? Now here, um, you know, I mean, just use your use your judgment. I mean, the razor is already uh, taking hair off my arm, really easy. All right. So here, all we're doing is kind of polishing it, refining it, and we are preparing the burr for removal. Okay. So we still had that burr, right? Which we used that burr to tell us when we were, uh, you know, at a bevel set or when we were sharp. But that burr um, is just a, a thin foil of steel at the very edge. And if we don't get rid of it, then it'll kind of fool us into thinking that we're sharp. But the second it contacts uh, anything really, I mean hair, uh, anything, it'll just kind of fold over. Okay, that is feeling really, really good there. Let's go ahead and give it a couple of more. A couple of more really light strokes, right? I guess I should have mentioned that this whole time, um, you know, since, uh, since I decided that, you know, we'd gone far enough on the repair portion, um, you know, the pressure has been lightening up. Okay, so now you can't see it. You probably won't be able to feel it because we've got it prepped pretty good. <coughs> but We've got our bevel set, we've got the bevels polished, okay? But there is likely to be a little bit of that burr remaining on the edge, okay? Now, uh, a burr can be different sizes, right? You can have a heavy burr, you can have a light burr, right? Now, the scratches that make up that burr are also gonna be at different grits, okay? Because the different grits of stone that you used. Um, The way I like to explain, the way I like to explain the different conditions of a burr, okay, is in the same grit that made the burr. All right. So a <clears throat> a 325 or a, a burr that was formed on a 325 grit stone is going to be a completely different animal 
than a burr that was formed on a 12,000 grit stone, okay? <clears throat> it's gonna be much smaller, it's gonna be much more refined, okay? And it's gonna be stronger versus weaker. So the coarser the burr, the stronger it is, the finer the burr, the weaker it is, right? Now, from what I've seen, most high quality carbon steel blades, okay, they start losing the ability to hold a burr at around about 6,000 grit, okay? Now that could be 5,000 grit, it could be 8,000 grit, you know, depends on your stone, depends on if you're stone stropping, depends on if you're pushing in, uh, uh, edge forward strokes instead of edge trailing strokes, okay, all that kind of matters. But somewhere around the 6,000 grit uh, level is when the edge starts that burr, it just is, it's so fine that it can't really hold on to the, uh, the rest of the blade. Uh, you follow? Okay. So, <clears throat> we have got a nicely prepared 6,000 grit uh, edge with a 6,000 grit burr on there, right? To remove that, honestly, we're going to use the palm of our hand, you know? I mean, a lot of guys, every time I do a, a video that's got the palm stropping technique in it, somebody says, oh, hey, that can't do anything, right? Well, hello, your hand is the first portion or the first stage of leather, right? I mean, leather, which is what our strops are made out of. Can you see it? That's an English bridal strop, right? Okay. Well, that leather started off as being a horse's skin, all right? So if, you know... <clears throat> It's been tanned and it's dead, you know, but it's still skin, right? Now, if you work with your hands an awful lot, you know, like I do, I mean, there's probably a whole bunch of grit bedded into that hand, you know, dirt, uh, sharpening stone particles, steel particles, you know, depends on what I've been working with the last couple of days. But there's probably going to be a whole bunch of trash in there. Well, that's going to act to, you know, kind of abrade the... Uh, the edge of the, the knife or the razor that you're working on, okay? But it is going to take off or start taking off the last little bit of that burr, okay? Now, if you are not comfortable pulling a razor sharp piece of uh, steel across the palm of your hand, then don't, you know? Um, you know, grab yourself a pair of old jeans or uh, a newspaper and fold it over a towel rack and make a strop like that, okay? But it just so happens that, uh, you know, the palm of your hand is really easy to wash off when you're done, and it's handy. I mean, it's right there, right? Okay. Okay, that feels pretty good. Now we are ready for the strop, okay? Now, the strop. Um, that one kind of depends on, you know, what you want. I mean, if you've got, uh, you know, if you've got the cash to get one of these, ah, let's kind of point you over this way and down this way. If you've got the cash to get one of these nice drops, um, you know, they are pretty dang cool. This one right here was from Straight Razor Designs. I believe they're out of business now. Um, I think it's Straight Razor Emporium. Um, dude's got a YouTube channel. Uh, really excellent videos and everything. Um, he sells strops that are similar to these. I want to say these types of strops will run you anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks. Just depends on, you know, what kind of material you want to made out of, right? Okay, so what I do on these strops, well, I mean, you've seen these strops before. So anyhow, so what I do is I have, um, you know, uh, chromium oxide prepared on the inside there. Now this will also take care of any remaining burrs, okay? Because you went from a 6,000 grit stone and I think the chromium oxide's like 30,000 grit, something like that. So this is gonna polish It'll polish your edge and get rid of any, you know, any little bit of burr that's still remaining on there. 
Now I'll go ahead and palm strop a little bit again. Now what the palm stropping does after the chromium oxide is it gets the chromium oxide off your razor. Because uh, that chromium oxide, you only want it on the strop that you want it on, right? So that was a chromium oxide and canvas. Now we're going to straight clean, uh, can't remember if this is canvas or linen. But we'll give it some strokes here. Okay, now before we go to the leather, we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way. Get some hot water going. Get some hot or warm water on my whiskers, get them softening up. And then we're going to go ahead and finish up on the leather. Like I said, I think this one is uh, <coughs> English Bridal. I'm guessing that's horsehide. But it's a pretty cool strop. Um, <coughs> like I said, if you don't have a strop and you don't want to buy a strop, um, you know, I've had pretty good luck with just straight up newspaper. You know, take a large sheet of newspaper and fold it over a couple of times and then uh, run it over a, a towel rack or something. Okay. <coughs> so that ought to be a nicely honed and ready to go razor. And we are going to find out if it's nicely honed and ready to go. And there's only one test that really means anything. We have got some Parasso, uh, the sandalwood kind. This is one of my favorite brushes. I uh, turned this one out of uh, Coca Bolo, and I think Maggard sells these. Uh, uh, Badger brushes. I can't remember what size it is. And then <clears throat> a friend of mine that I met at uh, uh, a straight razor makers meet that I went to a couple of years ago, uh, Jamie Small, maybe? Um, she makes these little coins. So I had her make me like, I don't know, a dozen of these coins, and then you just glue them to the end. And they look kind of cool. Okay, so we got a lather going on there. Now this is a part where you get to see my, my mug up close. Because I'm looking past you to see the mirror. And this is a tiny little mirror. Okay. So let's see how we did. Except for I can't see... Oh. That's it. I'm looking at the wrong part of the mirror. I'm looking to try to see what you're doing. There we go. I've got a mirror behind y'all. so that I can see what you're seeing. Yeah, you can see that. Well, 
Well, it kind of feels like we did kind of okay on the edge. I mean, even though it was a... Even though it's a quick and dirty, you know, plain Jane, one th or 1,000, 6,000 grit edge, I mean, it sure... Especially seeing as how my whisker, my uh, whiskers didn't get softened up enough. I mean, it's still. It's still taking them off. Okay, now this part right here is pretty, well, I guess you can't see that. Uh, let me rinse the extra off my face. Okay, I think that um, for the purposes of a YouTube video, that's about enough of that. I'll go ahead, after we get done here, I'll go ahead in the bathroom and clean it up because let me tell you, trying to shave around, you know, around you guys into a little bitty mirror like that, it's kind of tough. <clears throat> okay, now this right here is a very important part of your edge maintenance, okay? As soon as you get done shaving, go ahead and either do a couple of palm strokes, okay? Or if you're not comfortable, you know, with the palm stropping, go ahead and use your uh, your blue jean or your uh, uh, newspaper strop. Okay, something that you didn't spend a whole lot of money on, and it's uh, readily available. Okay, so what these strokes do right after the shave is they clean the edge. Okay, now that edge, you know, just shaving whiskers off your face. Once you're done with your shave, there's going to be <clears throat> whiskers on there. There's going to be f bits and pieces of skin. Um, you know, there's going to be probably some blood. Uh, there might be like, if you went over a, a zit, there might be some pimple juice in there. I mean, there's going to be all kind of nastiness right along that edge, right? None of that stuff is good for your edge, okay? <clears throat> so you palm strop that to get rid of all that nastiness, okay? Once you've palm stropped it, then I go to the linen side of my razor, all right? And I usually give it, I don't know, 10, 15 strokes. Now, the idea behind those is that, you know, any place where you might have hit a hard whisker and it kind of jacked a little bit of that edge up a little bit, okay, that aftershave stropping will kind of straighten that out. But the biggest part is that the heat from the friction will dry that edge out, okay? You need to, to make sure that that edge is nicely dry before you store it, otherwise it'll rust. And then the next time you come out to shave with it, you might not be able to see the rust, but I almost guarantee you it's there, okay? And now you're shaving on rust instead of a nice uh, clean steel, okay? <clears throat> and you'll never, get, you'll never get good results by doing that. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna call this good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, um, go into the bathroom and check with the big mirror and see if I missed any spots. I probably did. Um, 
and clean it up a little bit, um, you know, before I go on about the day. So um, again, Vance, if you ever watch this, um, you know, thanks again for the Father's Day present. It's a very cool vintage razor, and it's going to go in my, uh, you know, my rack that that holds like. I think there's six razors in there, something like that. Even if I got to kick a razor out, this one will go back in there or go in there and, you know, I'll start shaving with it once a week or once every other week or whenever I feel like it. So thank you, Vance, for the Father's Day present. Um, the rest of YouTube, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope that I, uh, you know, brought across how simple honing a straight razor can be and how little you need to do it. Um, like I said, that stone right there was 30 bucks when I bought it brand or 27 something off of Amazon. Uh, I think they've gone up a little bit now, but it's still a really good stone for, uh, for normal maintenance on a razor. Um, oh, I guess I will have, will mention that this was somewhat restoring a razor, right? Because it had a whole bunch of r rust on the edge. And there was probably some nicks and chips in there and there might still be a couple that's about the only time you really use the 1000 grit side or if while you're shaving you you know catch the uh, catch the edge on a fingernail or uh, you know you uh, um, you know hit the edge of the sink or something like that and dull it that's about the only time after your initial honing that you need to go down to the 1000 grit um, level okay the rest of the time the 6,000 grit and your, your strop will do just fine, okay? Um, unless it's been, you know, I don't know, a couple of years. I mean, one of my razors, uh, one of the first ones that I made, and still one of my favorite ones, the last time I honed it was, it was February, but it wasn't this last February, and it wasn't the February before that, it was the February before that. So. Uh, this coming February will be three years since that razor has touched a stone of any kind. Um, and I shave with it at least once a week because it's one of my favorites. And it's still going strong. I mean, every once in a while you have to, to go back to the chromium oxide. Um, you know, like every six months or so, do a half a dozen laps on the chromium oxide portion of the strop. And then linen and leather the, the rest of the time after that. So that 1,000 grit portion, uh, 1,000 grit stone, is really just for repairing damage and getting the edge shaped and everything. The rest of the time, your 6,000 grit stone and your uh, your strop does the rest. But anyway, so I hope I showed you that you don't need $5,000 worth of stones. You don't need uh, a 20,000 grit stone. You don't need a stone that they mined from you know Mars and sent down. Uh, you know, and somebody recovered it from an asteroid or something, I mean, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I mean, I, if you want to play around with that, okay, great. But really, when it comes down to it, a simple stone and a strop, <clears throat> you know, will get you shaven just fine. So anyway, so this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.